back. This is Newsroom. There's no denying that the tides of Christianity have turned many ways over many decades on the African continent. Critical trends in social, political and spiritual fears have had a number of implications for the church's mission in Africa. Christianity has in many ways turned into big business uh, and has also become entangled in politics. Christian pastors don't have a direct say in the running of any country, but their membership is often bigger than that of the ruling political parties in a variety of countries. How much power do they really hold? Well, joining us today is the author of the book Connect with the Continent, Terry Bean. Terry, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Good morning. Quite heavy subject matter we've got this morning, Terry, but you travel throughout the continent. Tell us your views on what we see as the rise of commercial religion, commercial Christianity in a way uh, on the African continent? Well, depending on the view you take, I mean, these guys are called either uh, prosperity preachers or uh, my favorite term is pastorpreneurs, um, which is a mix of sort of <laughs> pastoring and entrepreneurship. Uh, it's a mega industry. I mean, you only have to sit inside some of these churches to see uh, how big the congregations are. Mm. And some of the facilities themselves are, are bigger than football stadiums. We, we've seen with a building collapse in, in Nigeria where South Africans died, suddenly a keen focus here in South Africa on uh, these kind of uh, uh, pastorpreneurs, as you, as you call them. I quite like that one because uh, we've got the tenderpreneur thing in South Africa. Yeah. So it sort of, sort of links with that. Uh, how, how do Africans in general view the work of these, of these uh, men and women? Uh, it seems as if... There's a, a massive, massive following and an increasing following yeah. uh, on the continent. Why do you think that is? Well, views are divided. I mean, those that follow the church and, and, and follow the evangelical preaching of a lot of these uh, individuals, uh, the, the following is absolute and it is significant. It, it, it is massive and they have built significant industries around that. There are those that also just don't buy the hype. Um, they believe the miracles and the preaching is really a, a means of, of gathering wealth. Um, that's one school of thought, but there is yeah. a definite school of thought that those that, that attend the church and follow uh, those religious leaders, that they are, are all-knowing and, and they really have um, and, you know, significant influence and power. And, and psychic ability and they can cure cancer and all sorts. Here we have a guy, he's, he's called himself Dr. H.Q. Nala. He's from KwaZulu-Natal. He sells holy water for 10 or 12 rand a bottle, holy honey and the like. Um, and all his followers, they invest in these kinds of things because it cures everything from... Uh, you know, from, uh, from cancer, I would think, to giving you the lotto numbers and, and, and that sort of thing. That's, that's how deep it really goes. Tell us about the commercial side of these pastors. What, 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 how do they make money? Is it a question of them selling uh, holy water, selling holy honey, uh, special prayers, uh, miracles as we see here, that kind of thing? That's that kind of thing? It's a combination of things, even. I, I think uh, just the, the basic infrastructure is built around something called tithes. So you usually commit 10% of your gross revenue to the church on, on a, a monthly basis or on an annual basis. And in certain countries, that is tax-free. So it is a quite a lucrative um, uh, cash flow inflow in terms of the business. But also what they're providing is um, you know, specific prayers in specific areas. I mean, there'll be prayers. A, a lot of it is around prosperity, yeah. around looking at the Bible and preaching the prosperity aspects of the Bible. And I think that's quite a positive thing. But there are some, some darker aspects of it where they'll uh, want to talk about certain prayers for women who want to keep their husbands or for a lady who wants to find a new husband or for a gentleman who wants to get a tender. Yes. Um, that's a, that's a, fa a factor of it. But what's most interesting is, is you know, we don't look at them as individuals. We look at them as institutions and as enterprises. Yeah. I mean, some of the gentlemen that we've worked with and, and, and seen in these markets, uh, there's some really heavyweight names uh, like Pastor Chris Oyekilomi. Um, and they have churches in about 22 different countries. Um, they run uh, three 24-hour TV channels. There's a radio station. There is a social media network. Um, Rhapsody of Reason, which is one of their publications, has mm. a bigger circulation internationally than that of The Economist. So this is not an individual preaching in a particular location. This is a mega industry yeah. that kind of incorporates all the facets of a global conglomerate. Why are they so successful on the continent? Is it a scenario that that we like to believe a little bit more on the continent. I've got a friend of mine who says, in Africa, we are abnormally religious. Is that a fair statement? I think um, we're abnormally aspirational. 
so there's two, a combination of two distinct things that sort of come together. The first thing is a strong belief in many countries and many parts of many countries in Christianity. And that's a good thing. And then you have the desire to, for tomorrow to be better than today. And those two things com combined fit into the sort of prosperity uh, preaching uh, side of things. And the belief is that if I connect with the church and the church is talking to me or, or God is talking to me yeah. through these individuals, that I'm going to grow and prosper. And there's nothing wrong with, uh, fundamentally wrong with that message. When you have in, in, in certain um, uh, places, uh, churches, uh, one run, run by a, a group called Winner's Chapel. Uh, and Winner's Chapel, uh, I think in the Guinness Book of Records, has the largest place of worship on the planet. It's yeah. a 50,000 seater church. There is a runway at the back of the church that houses three or four of Pastor David's Lear jets. He flies in, delivers his service, turns around and goes on to the next day to do another service in another part of the country. So the belief is there. It's, 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 it's sort of you know, mass audience preaching. Finally, the opportunities there seems to be endless. We now call it the faith-based sector, I think. Is that where it's heading, a sort of industrial commercial scenario? Very much so. I mean, you know, there's some big growth areas continentally. Uh, we talk about the, the three big growth areas as being football, kids, and God. And, 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 and God being in the sort of, you know, the Christian um, or the commercialization of Christianity aspect. It's certainly growing. People are connecting to the churches very strongly. They are engaging with them. The church is providing services to them as well. But there's a lot of opportunity for businesses to engage with them in terms of providing financial services, products, a whole range of different things. So it, it, it is an absolutely um, fundamentally strong uh, part of many, many beliefs and, and many societies across the continent. Terry, very, very interesting. I hope in your travels you will come across this in the year to come and, 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 and give us some more of your views because it's a, it's a very interesting and, and something that's very passionately followed on the African continent. Thanks for joining us. That's Terry Bean, who's the author of Connect with the Continent. Uh, he'll keep us updated on his travels throughout the continent uh, on a sort of weekly basis as to where in the world is Terry, is what I would like to call it. Anyhow, let's have a look more now.